a discussion on calcium cycle. The calcium cycle starts from the disintegration of calcium-containing materials, which are typical constituents of most rocks, and liberates calcium on continents. In terrestrial ecosystems, calcium pools include reservoirs in soils, in soil minerals, organisms, and decomposing organic waste. Calcium ions are transported from continents to seas by river systems and groundwater inputs and are prevalent in oceans where thermal vents may provide additional calcium sources. Furthermore, calcium is used by aquatic ecosystems to generate and support hard structures like shells, pods, and reefs. Calcium is mostly extracted from the bodies of water by the crumbling of mineralized living things. Either solid or liquid atmospheric discharge can supply calcium to land and in the ocean. This biogeochemical cycle is influenced by anthropogenic factors such as acid deposition, terrain alterations like desertification, harvesting, and rising atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. At this point, let us talk about a particular anthropogenic factor, specifically acid deposition, to better comprehend the impact of anthropogenic factors on the calcium cycle. In the said factor, sulfuric and nitric acids are produced when sulfate and nitrogen oxides, which are exhaled into the atmosphere by humans, are oxidized and hydrolyzed. These acids are subsequently delivered to ecosystems by precipitation or condensation of water vapor on plants and are responsible for pushing terrestrial ecosystems toward or into calcium deficiency. Acid fog contact with foliage immediately removes calcium from leaf membranes, resulting in tissue damage and calcium depletion in plants. Moreover, terrestrial bodies of water are also affected by the acid deposition. Runoff and groundwater are the main sources of calcium for streams and lakes, as the minerals in soil surrounding these bodies of water become less abundant in calcium ion, so does the water. The acid neutralizing capacity or ANC of fluids is influenced by calcium ion concentrations which causes pH oscillations with changes in proson fluxes and intensifies the effects of acidic deposits. We then proceed to the explanation as to why the altered calcium cycle combined with climate change increases the vulnerability of the following. Biodiversity Calcium has been an important nutrient to all organisms, especially in muscle cells, fertilization, and other structural roles like coral reefs. The coral reef is made up of coral polyps that secrete layers of calcium carbonate to create foundations of corals to protect them from threats. But how is calcium carbonate formed? It is formed in the ocean when carbon dioxide combines with calcium. When the corals consume the calcium carbonate, they will build their skeletons. And when this is continuously repeated, they eventually construct a formidable reef. However, when corals are disrupted, it could result in coral acidification, which is caused by greenhouse gas emissions that make it harder for coral reefs to further develop their skeletons. Coral acidification also causes coral bleaching, where corals will turn white because of the changes in temperature, light, and nutrients. Food security. Coral reefs need calcium carbonate to help them build strong reefs that would protect them to secure their food and shelter. In the same essence, we humans also need calcium to make our bones stronger and healthier. According to studies, the most abundant mineral in our body is calcium that helps us function properly, regulate our bodies, and protect our health. However, according to a study by Kumsa, 3.5 million people worldwide are at risk of calcium deficiency due to a lack of information regarding calcium intake, dietary intake, and food insecurity. In addition, climate change reduces the food production and stability of calcium-rich vegetables. Calcium deficiency could lead to chronic illness, dental problems, osteoporosis, and depression. Human health. Calcium helps humans have healthy bones and teeth, is required for more cellular structures and biochemical processes, and is also used in nerve impulses, muscle contractions, DNA transcription, and blood clotting. Climate change, along with other anthropogenic influences, will greatly affect the production of calcium and its biominerals, thus will also affect human health and their quality of life, as calcium is greatly used in the field of medicine and agriculture, where most of human needs and essentials come from. And lastly, 
water quality. Calcium is just as significant to our waters and marine ecosystems just as it is on land, as it is a major component of biominerals such as calcium carbonate, aragonite, and calcite, which are essential for marine waters and life to thrive. According to a study by De La Rocha, carbon dioxide that causes the alteration of this cycle is depressing the saturation state of seawater with respect to calcium biominerals, affecting the growth of marine organisms. Other than that, bodies of water will become oligotrophic, resulting in bad water quality, since calcium is known to reduce the toxicity of many chemical compounds on fish and other aquatic life. Calcium also functions as a pH stabilizer in our waters and gives it a better taste, so we can say that the alteration of the calcium cycle will greatly affect water quality. So as students, what can we do to alleviate these problems? First, we could start with awareness by being more knowledgeable of these dilemmas and by spreading awareness to other individuals so that we may collectively be able to take necessary action. Then from here, we should not anymore contribute to the alteration of the calcium cycle through the minimization of our own carbon footprint and the activities that we do that contribute to climate change. We should personally minimize our own carbon footprint since, as mentioned earlier, carbon dioxide alters the calcium cycle. Moreover, increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere acts as a greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change, which is one of the many causes of desertification, a factor that alters the calcium cycle. In the same essence, we should then avoid supporting activities that contribute to climate change, like deforestation, the burning of fossil fuels, and the generation of too much power. From here, may we learn to realize the importance of calcium and the calcium cycle in every aspect of the ecosystem and learn how to help in maintaining the positive effects of the said cycle. And that is our discussion of the calcium cycle. Thank you and have a good day.